Hi guys, I'm Inkugaki. Welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're going to learn how to make our hair, X, Y, and Z parameters, and also how to apply physics to it. Let's begin. All right, guys, let's see what we're working with. I'm going to go and show you what I have. I have this part of the hair that consists of the hair top, hair front, and hair sides. And then I have in the hair back, this one right here, and this other one that is a little bit darker. So, this is a really simple hair cutout, but it's going to help me show you guys how to do these kind of things. So, let's begin. So, first things first. We're going to make warp deformers for each individual part of our hair, okay? And these warp deformers are going to contain the information in our X and Y parameters. So, I'll see you in a second. Alright guys, as you can see in the deformer tab, we made all the deformers for our respective parts of the hair. So what I'm going to do next is something that we did in our last video. I'm going to go into our head parameter and I'm going to unlink the angle X and Y parameters, okay? Now I'm going to go back to our deformer tab and I'm going to select only the deformers guys because we need the parts of the hair separated from the angles X and Y parameters because we're going to do something really cool with them later. So we select the deformers only, okay? And we're going to go to our parameters tab and make three keyforms on our angle X. Now, I'm going to transform accordingly all the pieces of the hair so our face can look left and right. I'll see you in a second. Hi guys, it's me again. This process was achieved through the use of the temporary deform tool that I showed you in our last video. Also, if you want to know how to reflect linked parameter corners, you can check this video out and there are some timestamps in the description that will help you find how I did it. Let's go back to the video. Alright guys, we finished our angle X and Y parameters completely. Now, what we need to do next is our angle C parameter, but it has a little bit of a trick into it, okay? So, we're going to go and select all our warp deformers and put them in our head Z rotation deformer, okay? Once that's done, we can check our angle C parameter. And it actually kind of doesn't work as much, right? So what we're going to do is something really simple. We're going to go and look for our hair back sides, okay? And what we're going to do next is select our respective back hair pieces, right? And we're going to create a new warp deformer. And this one is going to be called warp deformer back rotation. Now, this question might come into your mind. Why am I using a normal warp deformer instead of a rotation deformer? And the answer is really easy. Let me show you. When I make another warp deformer in our deformer tab, we can see that we have our back sides that has the X, Y, and Z. Then we made this one. Our transformations still work, but if I make a rotation deformer of any kind, I'm just gonna make one over here at random. Well, and I put the um, warp deformer with the hair inside of it like this. When we transform, our hair is not going to transform, okay? So for some reason, warp deformations do not apply into parts that are inside rotation deformers. Therefore, we're not going to use rotation deformers in this one, okay? So what we're going to do now is select our new warp deformer and create three keyforms. Once our warp deformer is in the angle minus 30, I'm going to make a counter rotation, as simple as that. And then I'm going to change the position just a tiny bit. So the rotation looks natural, okay? Now, when we do this, our face is still going to work with our hair rotated like this, okay? And it's going to maintain the position and everything. So I'm going to do that with this piece and the other piece of the hair, and I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, on to our last step. Now, the only thing we are missing is movement in our hair that makes it flow like if it was hair, right? And this can be accomplished by using physics. All right, guys. Now, the first step we need to do is set up our physics parameters, right? So I'm going to use these three pre-made parameters that Live2D have, all right? Hair move front, side, and back. If you want to use more than these three parameters, you can absolutely do it. You just need to go to new parameter and make a new parameter. Let's say hair move top. And I would recommend you to make the ranges from minus one to one, okay? Now we have a new parameter. 
For more organization, I'm going to put them in a folder. Now, what we're going to do now is transform our hair parts. This can be accomplished by transforming the hair in different warp deformers, but it's so much easier to just transform the parts. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to work first on our hair back, okay? While selecting the hair part, you guys can see that the mesh is really, really heavy, okay? This is because we're going to transform the hair quite a bit, okay? So to begin with, I'm going to go with our deform path edit tool. And let me tell you guys, this tool makes this process so much easier. I put this in the middle so these circles right here work with both sides. If I select one, both sides are going to move. If you're working with just half and then flipping and duplicating, you can totally go and make the, the form path it did in the shape of the hair. There's no problem with that. Now, while selecting the part, I'm going to go to the parameters tab. I'm going to select the hair move back that I forgot to put in this folder. And I'm going to make three keyforms, all right? Now, while these three keyforms are here, I'm going to explain you what keyform is for what thing, okay? So, kind of intuitive, if we look to our left, where does the hair should wave? So that's what we're going to animate. In this case, if we're looking to the left, I'm going to go with my hair move back parameter and I'm going to make it go like this. Now it looks like if the hair had movement. Now, the hair move back is going to work as a pendulum. And remember that thing because I'm going to show that later. Now. Once you like the transformation of the flow of the hair that you make, well, you can reflect it, right? So I'm, I'm going to do that in one, two, three, reflect it. There we go. Now our hair does this. So I'm going to go to the hair sides and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to go to hair move side, make three keyforms. And in here, to make it simple, I'm going to make a little bounce effect, okay? Something like this. Now, once we have the hair like this in this keyform, I'm going to go to the 1.0 keyform. I'm going to make the same effect, but the difference is that it's going to be bouncing outwards, something like this. All right, guys, now we have the hair move side in this fashion, okay? Now to finish, I'm going to select the hair front and I'm going to do something similar. For this case, I'm going to select the part, select the parameter, make three keyforms, and add my uh, the form path edit tool. Now guys, for this example, I'm also going to do a bounce effect, but I'm going to follow the shape of the hair. That is something that is really important actually. Something like this, okay? Now, on the other side, I'm going to do something similar, but since we have this part of the hair that already has a direction, right? It's going to the left instead of the right. What I'm going to do is just going to make a little bit of a pop, okay? Something like this. Let me show you again. Now, the only two pieces that I'm missing are this one and this one. So what I'm going to do is uh, make this one see the flash and I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, we finished our hair movements. Let's check them out. The hair back, okay, pretty cool. Hair front, really nice, yes. Hair side, yep, pretty cool. And hair top. This one is the one that we made custom and actually looks pretty cute. So once you guys have your parameters set up, we can go to our physics tab, all right? Now, the physics tab is here. We're going to go to modeling we're going to go down and here, where it says open physics slash scene blending settings. We're going to click it and this new window is going to appear. Now we have a lot of information here. We have our input and output window. We have our physics model settings down here. We can also see in the middle all our parameters and the ones that have a red dot in it are the ones that contain information in key forms, okay? And at last we have here a really cool interactive scene of our model. Check this out. If we click, we can see how our model moves. This is pretty cool. So here is where we are going to check our physics. Now let's begin. All right, guys. Now let's make our hair physics group. To do this, we're going to go here to this button that says add. We're going to press it. And then this window is going to appear. And I'm going to call it hair. I'm going to hit OK. 
and now these two windows lit up. So in our first window, that will be this one, we can see that we have input settings and output settings, okay? Right now I'm on the input settings. I'm sorry if this button looks a little bit weird, but on Mac, I don't know why, but yeah, they look like this. So while we are on the input settings, we're going to add our input parameters. This means that we're going to add the parameters that are going to affect our physics, okay? So I'm going to go to this button right here that says add and all our parameters are going to appear. Pretty cool, right? In this case, I'm going to select the angle X, angle Y, and also angle Z. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm selecting these ones. This is, these ones are for this specific example, but they should work for you as well. First of all, we made motions of our hair for when we look for left and right, right? So this would be angle Y. We also made some bouncing effects for our hair, meaning they could work for our angle Y. And if we tilt our head on the angle C, whenever we are using our VTuber model, we also want the hair to move, right? So that's why I'm selecting these three. I'm going to hit OK. And now these three parameters are going to be here. I'm gonna make this window a little bit bigger so you guys can see, there we go. So we have input, angle, Y, C, type, position or angle and effectiveness, all right? So for this example, we're going to leave the angle X and Y in position and the angle set on the angle. Now, in effectiveness, we have 100% effectiveness to distribute amongst positions or angles. So angle is going to have 100% effectiveness because it's only one, right? Only one angle, angle C. I'm gonna hit OK. Now in this case, I'm going to go with effectiveness 70 on the angle X and 30 on the angle Y. This may vary on your model. You can test this out later, but I'm explaining it so you know, you know, what these numbers are for. Now, we're going to go to this new window called physics model settings. And here, we're going to add something that I mentioned a while ago, a pendulum. I'm going to press the add button and a new pendulum is going to appear, right? Pretty cool. Now, we can see that this pendulum has information. It says that is the number one, it has a duration, a shaking influence, a reaction time, and also an overall acceleration. Now you can play with these values, but for this example, I already have mine, and I'm going to show them to you in a second. But before that, I'm going to add another pendulum. A second one appears and is going to be linked to the first one. Pretty cool. So I'm going to leave this like this for now, and now we're going to go to the output settings. Now in the output settings, the window is kind of similar. We have the add deletes, right? But in this place, we're going to add the parameters that are going to be affected by what we placed in our input settings, okay? So I'm going to hit add and I'm going to look for our hair movement. Hair move back, front, side and top. So I'm going to check all of them and I'm going to hit okay. Now, once that's done, we can see that a new information appears. We have the pendulum number. This would mean which parameter is being affected by which pendulum, all right? We have our output that will be each of our new parameters, okay? We have the effectiveness of the inputs that we said before, and well, we have the scale and the output. All right, guys, now, once we have our parameters in the output settings, congratulations, we have physics. Let's check it out. If we move our character, our character is going to have movement in its hair, right? Look at that. But it looks kind of a wobbly kind of thing. It doesn't look that soft in my opinion. So we're going to change that. And I'm going to show you how. And also, by the way, I'm going to make this window bigger a little bit. So you guys can see that if we move the angle set, yep, the hair is now reactive to this angle as well. Now, we can see that the shakiness basically comes from our pendulum physics. So we can change our pendulum values in order to make this more appealing. And well, as I said before, I already have my values, so I'm going to put them here, right? So in the pendulum number one, I'm going to leave it like that, but I'm going to change the pendulum number two. I'm going to write here 8.0. Now in the shaking influence, I'm going to type 0.8, and I'm going to leave everything like that. We can see now that the hair shakes a little bit less. Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Now my new parameter, I would like it to be less bouncy. So I can basically go and look for it on our hair move top here on the output settings. 
and I can reduce the effectiveness, let's say to a 50%. Okay, now it bounces less, okay? And, well, congratulations, guys. Now you know how to make physics on a live 2D model. Guys, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot something really important. I was just saving the video and I saw this and I was like, hmm, I feel it should look better, right? And I forgot to tell you this really important tip. Uh, it's about the opacity of the hair. Um, I don't know how I forgot this. So, but let's let's do it in a, in a hurry, okay? So, uh, well, if you guys know, we made some expressions with our eyebrows, but now our eyebrows are basically invisible because they are being... Uh, obstructed by the hair front so there is a simple tip and it's actually really genius and i forgot to share it in the video but it's something like this we're going to go to the parts tab and we're going to go to the hair parts that are basically in front of our eyes and or eyebrows and i'm going to show which one they are they are hair front and hair sides right once we have them what i'm going to do is unlock the hair sides and front warp deformers and we're going to duplicate them so i'm going to select them from the deformer tab to make it easier well, hair deformer front and sides so you guys can see that i'm selecting everything here right now hear me out hear me out i'm going to go back to the parts tab and i'm going to make a new folder and i'm going to call it hair opacity all right let's hit ok and now these four parts that we selected are inside a new folder right so this is going to make it easier for us to duplicate it. Once we have them, I'm going to copy and paste. We're going to copy the warp deformers and also the parts, okay? Once we have them, we can see in our parts that, well, that we have them duplicated. That's great. I'm going to select one set of these parts. I'm going to make, an, again, a, an, I don't know, hair front folder just for organization. And it's going to stay on the hair folder, right? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter which one because they are the same basically. And I'm going to go to my eyes folder, I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to lock this so I can have positioning and you guys are going to do this. Select one of the folders and put it behind the eyes folders. Remember, these folders of the eyes contain every part of the eyes and also the eyebrows, okay? Now, check this out. What I'm going to do is select these two warp deformers that we have here, and I'm going to create a new warp deformer, right? We create it, and if we go to our deformer tab, we can see the new warp deformer of hair front contains our other two deformers, right? This means that positions and everything are still a thing, physics are still a thing. So I'm going to change the name of this one just so we know what we're working with. Now, check this out. Since this warp deformer contains these pieces, I'm going to go to the inspector tab and look for the opacity and I'm going to lower it down around, let's say, 60%. Now, you can see in the model that our hair is translucent or transparent. This works because we duplicated the hair before, right? Physics and positions are still going to work and now if you make expressions or anything like that, Let's say, where do we have the expressions? You guys can see that our eyebrows are now seeable, right? And our expressions are going to work as intended. So that was the tips. Really quick, really fast. All right, guys, that'll be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And now in our next video, we're going to stop being a floating head. Yes, we're going to learn how to animate our body. So I'll see you later and I hope you have a nice day.